So just like finite state machines, for any language we may have many different regexes that generate the same language. So what we're going to look at, at, at in this video is some algebraic rules that we can use to make reg regular expressions simpler. What you'll need to remember are the rules for what defines a regular expression and some basic first year algebra. So concepts like what a zero or an identity mean when we talk about algebraic things, for example, zero is the zero of multiplication and addition, etc. What the concepts of associativity and commutativity mean. So you all know how to manipulate some basic algebraic expressions. For example, if you have this thing here, then you'll be able to reduce it down to this expression here, which is simpler to look at, using some basic properties, like for example, that multiplication distributes over addition and that you can reduce this expression down to be a simpler expression. We're going to teach you a few rules that apply in a similar manner to regular expressions, which you can then move through in the same sort of algebraic manner to reduce the, a large complicated reg regex down to a simpler one. So the first thing to remember is that a regex describes a language which is just a set, which means that the same basic principles that are apply to the concepts like union, um, and the empty set and things like that in a regex still apply to regexes directly. So when we write down something like a regex union with another regex, then the same rule of commutativity of union applies. So that means that it's exactly the same as writing beta union alpha. It also means that union is associative. So if I have some regular expression AA union B all union C, then that's exactly the same as A, A, union with B, union C. And if you look at the definition of sets, that makes complete sense. The empty set is the identity for union. So that just simply means that whenever we end up with something that describes the empty set in a regex, and it's unioned with another regex, then that is exactly the same as just the original regex alpha. So alpha union, the empty set is just alpha. Also, we say that union is idempotent, which means that if I apply it as a binary operator like this to two, of, two equivalent regexes, then that's just exactly the same as the original regex. And this makes sense. A set union with its set can't add any extra elements. It's just itself. Now we're going to talk about concatenation, which is where we start to see some regex-specific behavior. So concatenation is associative. So if I have alpha, beta, gamma, so three regexes. Remember, these might be complicated things, so like alpha might be A, A, B, B, clean, or something like that. But if I have th two, three regexes concatenated, then it doesn't matter which order I concatenate them in. Secondly, the empty string, epsilon, is our identity for concatenation. So what that means is that when we concatenate eps onto something, it doesn't change it. Alpha eps is exactly the same as alpha. Remember that before, the empty set was the identity for union, which meant that when we unioned something, we kept the original it with something, we kept the original set. In this case, the empty set is the zero for concatenation. That means that when we concatenate the uh, regex with the empty set, we end up with the empty set. Now, this makes sense because if I have a set, let's say it's just one string here, and then I try to concatenate it with every member of the empty set. Well, the empty set has no members, so there's no pairwise results. So the result of concatenating those two languages is just the empty set. We also see that concatenation distributes over union. This is just like multiplication distributing over addition. So before, remember when you had x multiplied by y plus z, we could just multiply x with y and x with z to get xy plus xz. Well, this same appro um, approach applies to concatenation and union. So when we have alpha, union, beta, all multiplied by gamma, that's, uh, sorry, concatenated with gamma, that's the same as alpha concatenated with gamma, union with beta concatenated with gamma. And because concatenation is associative, this doesn't matter which order we, we do it in. Finally, we have a few rules with clean star. So clean, the clean star of a language always adds in epsilon. So the clean star of the empty set is the 
language just containing the empty string, which we represent in a regex as just eps. Also, eps clean isn't adding anything in, so the empty string clean as a regex is just the empty string. If we have already cleaned a regex, i.e. we have added in all of the possible ways of concatenating the things together, extended out to infinity, then cleaning it again doesn't add in any more elements. So a regex cleaned twice is just the original regex. So if I have AA clean clean, then that is exactly the same as just AA clean. This will be helpful sometimes when you end up simplifying regexes down and then you end up with nested clean, clean styles. If I have the same regex in a row cleaned twice, then that's just the same as the original um, regex clean. And that makes sense because if I have, say, AA clean followed by AA clean, then anything I can generate by generating a string here and then generating a string here, I could have just generated as a longer string using just this regex and then left this one as the empty string. So this regex out the front or equivalently the regex out the back doesn't add anything. So if we have this same regex twice, both cleaned, concatenated together, then that is just um, the same as the um, one of the, the regexes cleaned. Also, we have this identity here, which is that the union of two regexes, all cleaned, is just the first regex cleaned, concatenated with the second regex cleaned, all cleaned. And that can be useful sometimes, as we'll see. Now, the next few rules that I'm going to show you are probably the ones that are the most useful to actually simplifying things because they're the least obvious. And I'll talk about things where we have regexes um, where we can look at two regexes and see that one describes a language which is a subset of the other one. And when we can recognize things like that, we can often remove one of them. So for instance, if I have two sets, A and B, and B is a subset of A, then unioning A with B doesn't add anything in because all of the elements that are in A, all of the elements, sorry, that were in B are already in A, so I'm not adding anything in by unioning them. So if I have two regexes unioned, and one of them contains the other one, then I can throw away the smaller one and I still have the same overall regex. So, for instance, A clean as a regex includes all of the elements of the regex AA, which just represents the single string AA. That means that I can simplify this regex just down to A clean, because unioning it with this thing here doesn't add anything we have a similar concept for concatenation, but it only applies when we're concatenating two cleaned things. So for instance, if I have two regexes, alpha and beta, and I know that the language generated by cleaning alpha is a subset of the language contained by cleaning beta, then if I have the cleans concatenated together, then that's just the same as this clean here. And that makes sense, because if this fact here is true, then any string I can generate with a alpha clean, I can just generate with beta clean. So for instance, if I want to generate any string by generating something with alpha clean and then concatenating it with generating from something from beta clean, I could have also generated the first thing just using beta clean. And because cleaning is just concatenating things, I only needed one beta clean to generate that in the first place. And then I can set alpha clean to the empty string. So the alpha clean out the front there doesn't add anything in terms of the set of all strings that I can build up using that regex. So alpha clean, beta clean is exactly the same as just beta clean. If we look at this example here, we've got A clean concatenated with A union B clean. Now we can get rid of the A clean out the front because it is a subset of A union B clean. So for a more concrete example, let's say we generated the string, so with A clean and then A union B clean. If we generated the string of three A's followed by BB using that, I could have also generated that entire string just using the A union B. So the A clean at the front didn't add anything. So that means that I can reduce that regex just down to A union B all cleaned. 
And obviously, it doesn't matter what order I put this in. Um, I can just remove whichever of the two is the smallest set. So whichever of the two is the subset. And the final, probably least obvious rule, if I have a regex beta, and it is a subset of another regex cleaned, then if I have alpha and beta all clean, union all cleaned, then I can generate all of the same strings just using alpha clean. Now here we have a trivial example here, a and epsilon. So in this case, um, epsilon is a subset of a clean. So that means we can just remove the epsilon and generate all of the same strings. And that makes sense because the only thing that I can generate by concatenating any number of a's or epsilon together over and over again, I can generate just by concatenating any number of a's. A less trivial example might be a, a union a or clean. Now in this case, I can generate any, sh uh, the string a a is a subset of the string a, sorry, the regex a clean, which means that anything I can generate by concatenating these two things together as many times as I want, I can just generate by concatenating a's over and over again. So no bunch of theoretical rules is good without a useful example at the end of it. So what we're going to do is reduce this regex here down to a much, much simpler regex. I'd actually encourage you to go grab the set of rules and look at this regex yourself and see if you can go through and simplify it at least part way before you watch the rest of the video because I guarantee you that will make you understand this so much better than just watching me do the example for you. So really try, even if you have no idea, just try looking at a few things and seeing if you can find um, some of the regex rules that we just talked about which apply to this one. So write it down on some paper and do it. In fact, as a hint, I would start looking over here first. So the solution. I'm going to go through this step by step and over on the right here in blue are going to be the rules that I used to do the simplification. So in the first case, I see that I have a clean union with the empty set. Now we know that the empty set is the zero for union, so it doesn't do anything, which means that this reduces down to the exact same as this. So that's the first simplification. Then we keep looking at that same thing and we notice that a clean clean again doesn't do anything extra. That's just the same as a clean. So we can reduce this down to this. At this point, we notice that we have our a clean union with a a. And we know that a a, that regex, is a subset of the regex a clean. So I can completely remove this element here and just have a clean. And at this point, I just had one thing in brackets concatenated with other things, so I can also get rid of the brackets. Now we'll start looking a little bit to the, to the right. We start looking here at B union BB all cleaned. And we note that we had this rule for uh, the union of something cleaned and how we could represent that instead as a concatenation of two cleans all cleaned again. So in this case, we can represent B union BB clean as B clean, concatenated with BB clean, all cleaned. At this point, we can see that BB clean is a subset of B clean. And we said that when we had two regexes cleaned, concatenated together, and one was a subset of the other, we could remove one of them. So in this case, we can remove the subset, which is this one. And we end up with just B clean. Again, because B clean is on its own in brackets and it's just beside concatenations, I can just remove the brackets and I end up with something that looks like this. So we aren't finished, but we are going to move on to a new slide to keep going so there's a little bit more space. But in the event that you did just skip straight ahead and watch this, now that you've seen me apply a few steps, maybe pause again and go and see if you can go from this expression down to something simpler. Again, it doesn't matter if you get it right, it matters that you've tried working through it and it's even better if you've actually hit a few hard points to make you think because that'll do so much better than just watching me do the solution.
Okay, solution. So now we notice that we have B clean concatenated with B clean, which we know doesn't add anything, so we can reduce that just down to B clean. Now, the only real complicated thing we have here is over on the right-hand side. And we notice that this little sub-expression here is the concatenation of two things cleaned. And B clean is a subset of A union B all cleaned. So I can remove the smaller set from the concatenation and completely wipe out this B clean. At this point, I notice that I have something cleaned, unioned with something else. And that second thing is a subset of the first thing. So I have that AB is a subset of A union B all cleaned. So I can remove this from the union because unioning something, a subset into a lot, it's superset, doesn't add any new elements. So now we have something that's starting to look very simple. And again, we have the case where we've ended up with something cleaned, cleaned again. So we can remove the extra clean and we just end up with a clean concatenated with B clean concatenated with A union B all cleaned. At this point, we notice again that we have the concatenation of two things that are both cleaned, and the first thing is a subset of the second thing. So in this case, I can generate everything that I could generate using a B clean using the A union B all cleaned. So I can completely remove this element here. And once I've done that, I end up in the exact same situation again, except it's just A that I've got cleaned out the front, so I can remove that. So in fact, that nasty regex that we saw at the start simply described the set of all strings that we can generate using A's and B's, including the empty string. So it was really just, if I have my alphabet being A and B, that original regex just represented sigma star. So what you should have gotten from this video is what the algebra of regular expressions looks like and the ways in which we can use those sets of rules just like we do with our normal algebra to reduce a more complicated regex down to a simpler one.